Hey statisticians here, we've got another quick video and today we're going to talk about the level of significance. This level of significance is crucial because if we go back to the concept of significance in a significance test, remember significance is talking about results that are unlikely to occur by chance, right? If we, um, to occur by chance, if we do some type of experiment or some type of study and we see that based on a hypothesis, some something is very unlikely to occur by chance, that gives us evidence that there's something interesting going on there, that maybe there's some real effect to causing us to reject a null hypothesis. So a level of significance is essential. Essentially, if you remember, um, in some previous examples, remember when we were, again, looking at a friend with the die, he was trying to see uh, if he had evidence that this was not a fair die. We got a, a p-value of about 4.6%, which was uh, less than our level of significance 0.05, and that caused us to reject the null hypothesis. So the key idea here is that this level of significance basically says how hard is it, is it how hard should we make it? So how hard should it be? How hard should if I could write, should it be to reject the null hypothesis? We want to know how difficult do we need it to be in this particular circumstance to reject our null hypothesis. Now, to, to be more difficult would mean that we would require something to be even less and less likely to count as significant evidence, right? Um, and I keep getting this out of focus. Let me go up just a little bit. So in, in, in other words, since our point, our, our level of significance was, was 5%, we rejected the null hypothesis because 4.6 was below that. But why have a level of significance of 5% and not something else, right? And so that's what we're going to look at today and start thinking about what kind of decisions go into picking particular levels of significance. Now, when we look at levels of significance, there's usually uh, five, uh, three typical levels, right, that, that you know, of course... There, you could do, do practically anything. There's reasons that you could do crazy stuff. But uh, what we see, at least in AP Stat, is f uh, three typical levels. We usually have alpha that equals 0.1, alpha equals 0.05, or alpha equals uh, 0.01, right? And, of course, with each of these, it's getting harder and harder and harder to reject an null hypothesis because we require uh, to be considered significant, to be considered unlikely to happen by chance, we require a lower and lower probability, right? So in this particular problem, right, when we were looking at the die and we were saying, do we have significant evidence to reject the null hypothesis? If, since our alpha was 5%, we absolutely rejected. If we had used an alpha of 10%, we uh, still would have rejected because 4.6 is below that. However, if we had an alpha of 0.01, we would have failed to reject. Why? Because in this instance, the only way we're going to be convinced that this die is unfair is if we had extremely, extremely significant, something that was a, a probability that was very, 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 very low, right? In this case, 4.6%, while it's low, it wouldn't have been lower than 1%, and therefore, we would have failed to reject. And so your choice of a level of significance is crucial. So what kind of levels of significance will we typically use? Well, again, these are these three that are most common. But of these three, the most common of the most common is, uh, as you might guess, da -da -da -da, drum roll please, 5%, right? As we've mentioned it before, it's a very typical level of significance. Um, and, and we'll reflect on this and its relation to level of confidences and things like that in another video. But let's, let's look at some examples where if we actually had to get to, we got to pick a level of significance ourselves, we might um, see how we might make particular choices. So here I have uh, some examples that were actually, we kind of saw in the past and we're going to revisit again especially this first and this first one, we saw that uh, a quality control board reports water is unsafe if the mean nitrate uh, concentration exceeds 30 parts per million. In a previous video, we said that the null hypothesis should have been that mean is the mean is 30, and the alternative was that the mean is greater than 30, right? And recall in this particular case that the mean being 30 meant that we were believing that the water was safe to drink. However, if the mean concentration level was greater than 130, we were concluding that the water was unsafe to drink, right? So if we were to say, pick an, a level of significance to choose to reject the null hypothesis, which level of significance would make most sense to us here? Should we use 10%, 5%, or 1%? Well, think for a second. I'll tell you the answer. For me, the answer would absolutely be alpha equals 0 0.10, right? Now, why 0.10? We do not want it to be hard to reject the null hypothesis. We want it to be easy to reject the null hypothesis. I live my life believing my water is safe. In fact, I have well water, right? And I have to, 
um, check my water in various ways uh, ever so often, but I live my life assuming my water is safe. However, if I'm actually concerned that it's unsafe, I'm going to allow just a little bit of evidence, something with a probability of less than 10% happening, to be enough evidence for me to start to conclude my water is unsafe and I need to do something about it. All right. So in this instance, a bit a high level of significance of like 10% would make it the, this would be the, in fact, I, I wrote harder from going from left to right, but this would be ultimately the easiest level to reject. And this would be the hardest level to reject the null hypothesis, right? So there you go. Let's look at another quick example. You can read it to yourself really quickly if you want to pause. But let's see, last year, your company's service technicians took an average of uh, 2.6 hours to respond, blah, blah, blah. Actually, we saw this in a previous video as well, too. Here, the null hypothesis was that things were the same as they were last year, 2.6 hours. The alternative was that, the, that there's a difference, and so that it's not 2.6. And so here, um, we could say that the null hypothesis is that things were the same from last year, and here we could say that things have changed. Now, um, what level of significance would we choose here? I'm looking at this. Um, do I have any particular reason to be worried about whether things have changed from the way they were last year? Um, I mean, is change bad? Sometimes change is good. Sometimes it's not so good. Actually, in this instance, I don't really see anything that deep about the scenario. So I, I don't want it to be too easy to reject. I don't want it to be too hard to reject here. This is kind of a standard case. I'd probably do 0.05 as a level of significance. Why? Because I don't know, what are, what are the consequences of things changing? Unless I could see some really deep consequence that I don't, I, don't, I can't think of right here right now, then um, maybe I would pick a higher or a lower level, but in this case, I think we're cool. Let's look at one more scenario, and this guy is new. A machine is set uh, to create rods with a diameter of one centimeter. A quality control manager wants to determine if the rods are a bit too small on average. If so, he'll shut down the machine temporarily for recalibration at a very great cost to the company. All right, and so in this case, they're set to be this diameter of one centimeter. So I'm guessing that and the null hypothesis on average should be that they are one centimeter, right? Um, what did he say here? He thinks that it might be a bit too small on average. So here mu might be less than one centimeter, right? And so he's gonna try to collect evidence and in fact, they're a little too small. Um, are there real consequences here uh, for rejecting or not rejecting, right? So in this case, everything is still, well, again, the same as they were in the past. And, and things here are, are too small. Um, but what's what's the consequence? Well, notice that if he needs to shut down this line, um, it might be an important thing to do, but it's, it's going to come at a great cost for the company. It's going to be kind of expensive, right? So they're not going to want to just shut the thing down arbitrarily for any old reason whatsoever. They want to have some very significant evidence to maybe justify the cost of shutting this thing down. So take a second, what level of significance do you think it should be? I think I lost my color marker from before, but um, for me, alpha equals 0.01, right? I'm going to make this a very difficult situation to reject the null hypothesis. Why? Well, maybe I should be concerned about my thing being un uh, miscalibrated, but since it's going to cost so much to do the recalibration, we're going to be gosh darn pretty dang sure that we that the, the, the thing's off before we spend all the time and money to get it fixed, right? And so these are some of these fundamental ideas about level of significance. The level of significance, really, is this boundary for when we'll reject an all hypothesis, right? But it's really a, this discussion for how hard it would be to reject the null, right? The higher your level of significance, say 10, 10%, the easier it would be to reject. Uh, the, the lower the level, like 0.01, the harder it would be to reject the most typical thing that we'll probably use if we don't have real good reason to go one way or the other is 0.05. Um, in another video, we're going to take a look at this and see how it connects to things like levels of confidence and to types of error that can occur whenever we, we do make um, this decisions and significance tests. So I uh, hope this was helpful, and I'll see you on the flip side. Giddy up.